and gentlemen, my first guest tonight has written for The Simpsons and SNL, and after 25 years, he's the elder statesman of late night hosts. Please welcome back to the show, my friend and yours, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> Nice to see you. Thank you very Thank much. You it's a lovely here. crowd. It was lovely. They love Thank people. you. Very excited to see Conan O'Brien. What a day. Back what on a, the East Coast. What it's a day. A treat for us. Yep. Yeah. Back in town. Yeah. For Big the day. Super Bowl. Big Super, Bowl. For the Super Bowl, obviously. That yeah. was a crazy game. That was. <laughs> you, you have exciting news. The new, you, the new Conan. It's you're really the, not. The, it's, it's the same the, Conan. It's the same Conan. You're the same Conan, but yeah. it's a new format. It's a new format. New I, set. Doing it for so long, I said, let's do half an hour. Because we noticed that our crowd, after half an hour, they were like, we're good. <laughs> really? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think, I think. I, I think got sad. show business, we call that, leave them wanting some. Yeah. No, even at half an hour, they're like, you know, you could go to 15, so. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's a, tonight, obviously, you're dressed beautifully. Thank but you. But suede, a suede jacket. Yeah. I see, I'm seeing a lot more uh, leather jackets. Yeah, yeah. Denim, a lot more denim for you. Yes, no more suits. Yes. Why not I like the... to look like a prosperous farmer, you know? <laughs> a farmer who's invested well in uh, high tech that's okay. the that's the look i'm going for uh-huh uh mm -hmm. yeah no it's important to me i got tired of wearing the suit and i think the suit's great but i did it for so many years i thought you I said should... that like you're afraid to hurt the suit's feelings well, suit's great suit's i'm sorry fantastic. suit i'm so there's a suit right here going come on give me a chance <laughs> no i it looks great it looks terrific sure. but i feel like you're you know interviewing me f for a bank loan and uh <laughs> I wanted to just sort of, I, <laughs> I'm a real hard worker. Uh, I wanted to kind of just uh, wear the kind of clothes that I do in real life. The only thing that's important to me is that I wear a jacket. I have to wear a jacket. Why is this? Thank you for asking. Uh, it's, it's, go job. it's going just it's as job. we rehearsed. Uh, <laughs> I, I wear, I have to wear a jacket because I have to break up uh, where my, the middle of my body is, because I have a, and this is a confession, I have a very disproportionate body. When, I was, when I was 14 years old, I had a massive growth spurt, massive. I am six feet four. I, I became, I went from being a kid to six feet four overnight, literally overnight. What happened is my legs grew and grew and grew, and my torso never did. <laughs> I have the legs, the legs of an NBA center, and I have the torso of a little girl. <laughs> And you know what? She's not even a healthy little girl. She, she was born in the 1840s. Her name's Molly, and she has rickets. We she's... actually have, we have, a, we have an image oh, of Oh, that's great. Torso. Thank you very There's much. That's my torso, torso right there. That was right from there. a that's long time ago. Conan. Yeah. Conan. Yeah. Thanks. Right there. Thanks for showing that. You'll look fine. Thank you. You'll look fine. That's funny. No one mentioned you'd be showing that photo. Uh -huh. Keep up the B12. Yeah. But it is. I, uh, I have, and so I, I have very, very long legs and then this tiny little torso that sits atop the, and people think I'm exaggerating, but I can prove to you that I am not. No. Look at this. This. <laughs> this is my natural. And look, Stephen. Yes. I look like a shorebird avoiding an oil spill, don't I? <laughs> it's just a freak show. And then I have this little R2D2 body on top. <laughs> it's a freak show. It is. It's a freak it show, is. and it's caused me. It is. And I have <laughs> no, no photographs, no paper mache. He is alive. He is alive. He's alive. <laughs> And my, uh, my pants, I'm always pushing them down. They're pushed down now. They are artificially pushed down. My penis is here. <laughs> when I use a urinal, I have to flip the tie back. <laughs> Unbutton two buttons, ladies, not one. <laughs> 
Lean down, take care of business. Sure. 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 It's a bad scene, man. Sure. A real bad scene. Yeah. So, so no more suits, I'm, so no more suits. You break it up a little bit. I realized I just undid all the good I'm trying to do <laughs> by displaying my body. But yeah, it's been uh, a source of great shame for me, and I want other kids out there. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. You, you're glad that I feel shame. Yes. <laughs> a little shame is a good thing. It's a very good thing. Uh, after 25 years on the air, yeah. uh, the, the, the show has changed. Uh, what, 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 else, what else have you learned about yourself over the years? Because certainly, you, you, when you do one of these shows, you yeah. learn what you're capable of. Right. But then you'll find out things about yourself that you never knew. Yes. I found out, and this isn't even through the show, this is just life. As you go on in life, when I started my show, I had just turned 30. I didn't know who I was yet. I've grown up and become... Uh, uh, sort of a man uh, <laughs> on television uh, over this last 25 years. But I'm finding out new things all the time. I found out, I went to see my doctor a couple of months ago, and he, just for physical, he was doing the physical, and he said, by the way, Conan, uh, I don't know if you're into this, but I do DNA testing, I'm very good at it. We can find out about your heritage. I think some people have done that, 23andMe. I said, sure, let's do it. Sure. So. He took a DNA sample, and I left. Two weeks later, he called me up, and he said, I've never, ever, ever had a DNA result like this before, and I've been doing this for 10 years. And I said, what is it? And he said, you are, and this is true, you are 100% Irish. <laughs> now listen, there's more, hold it. He said, you are 100%. He said, I've never seen a 100% anything. He said, I've been doing this a lot. I've done it with lots of people. I've seen 93.5, I've seen 96.1, I've seen 97. There's no such, no one is 100% Irish. He said, if you go to Ireland, and I looked it up, and it's true, and you get their DNA samples, you will find out that the most Irish looking people are like 86% Irish, 94% Irish. The Lucky Charms leprechaun, <laughs> true fact, 11% Spanish. And. <laughs> I, he said, you're 100%. And I said, well, I didn't know what to make of this. I said, what, is it, what does it mean? He said, what does it mean? He said, it means you're inbred. <laughs> and he said it, he said it just like that. He said it like that, you're inbred. And I was like, what? I said, that's, I mean, first of all, that's very rude. But then all this stuff started to make sense to me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Suddenly. Everything came together. Well, can I ask, could it, if you don't mind me asking, in, in your generation, do, is, is your wife Irish? Did you marry her? Well, here's what gets crazy, okay? Because I, uh, you know, I looked into it and I found out that the reason why I'm 100% Irish is that my people, we came to Boston around the time of the Civil War. We just all moved into a very small area, corner of Worcester, Massachusetts, and we just don't woo Worcester, no one woos Worcester. <laughs> <laughs> it's unwooable. Anyway, they moved into a small corner of Worcester, Massachusetts, all lived in one house and married each other for 180 years. That's what they did. And I realized, and, and then I saw that my, my brothers were marrying 100% uh, Irish women and having kids that look like those kids that would be like, oh, we're off to get on the Titanic, it'll all go well. You know, so Irish looking. And so I, I, I stopped the madness. I stopped the madness. Let me tell you about my wife. Been married 17 years. I love her to death. My wife is 50% Irish. 25% <laughs> Scottish. 25% Welsh. And I swear to God, in my family, they act like Conan got jungle fever. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> My brothers are like, what's it like, man? You went crazy. Conan airs weeknights on TBS and new episodes of the podcast Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend are available every Monday. Conan O'Brien, everybody. When we come back, I share some personal space with Steve Carell.